Hello, ladies. How are you? Good morning. I know it's 10, but it still feels like a super calm morning. Just going to wait for some of you to come on. The setup's a little different, <clears throat> excuse me, in this video. So I hope that I can see who's on. If you're here, give me a wave or a heart. I know I was just talking to Janet and she was going to join us. If you can hear, I have the window open and um, it was just raining. I'm just outside of Toronto and you can hear all of the lovely birds. But we are coming in live this morning. We're going to start a daily training. And so every day is going to have a different theme. Monday, we have motivation. Tuesday, business. Wednesday, mindset. Thursday, relationships. And Friday, networking. So if you're here, give me a hello. Okay, we have, I think, this is a very weird. Okay, there's people, yes, okay, awesome. We got people here, perfect. Good, good, good. If you can put in the comments too, before we get started, is there a question that you want answered in this morning's training? It's gonna be super fast, I don't want it to be long, like we're talking 15 minutes, but if there's something you struggle with, in routines and or you want help with or have questions with, put it in the chat box now so we can talk about it. And there will be Q&A. If you have questions throughout, feel free to put it in the comments and or even after, I'll leave a little bit of time for Q&A. Hello, ladies, this is so nice. Hello, Janet, and how do I pronounce your name? Ruiz, am I doing that properly? Maybe, I hope so. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions. We'll wait one more minute and then we'll get started. Is this fun? I have my tea. Anybody else been, we're in quarantine if you're watching this video later and I've just been living in my sweats and yoga pants, but I normally work from home. So <laughs> let's be honest, not much has changed. <laughs> Today, my cup, be bold. Anybody else love these? cheesy cups with sayings. It's such a, such a sucker. Okay, let's start this training. Good morning, ladies. If you're catching this later, hello, whenever you are watching it. Oh, Revis. Okay, awesome. Thanks for, um, thanks for correcting me. So much tea and PJs, see? I know, I hear ya. Okay, so let's start with, oh, can you hear the birds? It's crazy. They're saying hello. Where did you buy this mug? This one's actually winners. I have literally 10 of them that say different things. I have one that says like, be present, peace. I like to start my morning with like a mantra. So, <laughs> well, this is perfect because now we're getting into our routines. Okay, so routines. If you have a piece of paper, bring it out because I like to give exercises and almost like workshoppy so that you get something from the little training. I don't like to just lecture. I want you to be able to implement any tips and techniques that we're talking about so you can actually see a difference in your life. So the first question to ask yourself if you want to start routines and rituals, number one, do you want to start routines and rituals? Why do you want to start routines and rituals? What is the purpose of your routines and rituals? If it is for health and wellness and or just to feel good or productivity, it's important to know why you're doing this because depending on what your ritual or routine is, you're gonna need that goal and that why to anchor you to continue staying really dedicated to your routine and ritual because it's not always easy in the short term. In the long term, it becomes a lot easier and I'm gonna give you tips to make routines and rituals easier, but I know sometimes it can be hard to stick to them. So if you ladies find it hard to stick to them, let me know and let me know your purpose in the, in the chat right now so we can talk to that. However, it's kind of a trick question because when I say purpose, it's kind of like a goal. I want you to get really deep. If your routine or ritual is to stay healthy and or to do something to lose weight, that's fine, but it's kind of surface level. I want to know who cares. Like if you lost weight, what does that mean for you? It, and the answer is most routines and rituals, even productivity, because it's going to bring you more success in business. Most of your routines and rituals are to make you feel good, to bring you into alignment. When you feel good, 
you're going to work out, you're going to eat better, you're going to be more productive, and you're going to be more successful in whatever area you're looking to improve. Does that make sense? So in my opinion, and when I work with my clients and speak to tons of people, at the end of the day, our routines and rituals are meant to make you feel good. You need to feel good. So with that being said, I want you to ask yourself, what does it mean for you to feel good? Do you know what feeling good actually feels like? <laughs> because a lot of people don't. And the one of the biggest challenges are when people think they feel good and actually they're not. They've kind of set up this illusion for themselves that they think it's their intuition. They think they're feeling good but there's still so much conditioning and ego and control and all those things behind the intention and the actual feeling of feeling good. So I want you to, what I want you to do this week, your first little challenge and exercise is I want you to really challenge and get comfortable with what does feeling good mean to you? What does alignment feel to you? I'm going to tell you right now what alignment and feeling good feels like for me, but it is different kind of for each person and how you get there is different for each person. And knowing that, knowing how you feel good, knowing how you get there, in my opinion, is critical to making your routines and rituals. Because if you're going to just make routines and rituals that make you feel like crap, you're not going to do them. Okay. Even if they're hard, that's separate. Some routines and rituals can be difficult in the beginning, leading you to long-term success, but you still got to feel good. And if you're not, there's some mindset stuff and some other things there that we can talk about later. But the basic question and homework for this week, <laughs> what feels good for you? What does that mean? To me, when I feel good and when I feel in alignment, number one, inner peace. Inner peace is my biggest goal. Do I feel peaceful? Do I feel connected to myself and everything around me? Do I feel like you could throw anything at me and I would be able to stay calm and, and collected and have a sense of clarity? Okay, am I not thrown easily? So part of me feeling good and you feeling good in your routines and rituals is building that foundation. So that whatever happens in your day, you're staying as true to your best self as possible. But see, that's why I don't even really like these buzzwords, even best self. What does best self mean to you? Okay, so your first exercise is what does feeling good mean to you? Your second exercise, I want you to write out who is your best self? Like, What does that even mean to you? Who is she? What does she feel like? What does she act like? What does she do? I know so clearly who my best self is. And it's always evolving and changing, but in this moment, I know who she is very well, that I can feel her and connect to her in seconds if I'm thrown throughout the day. And this is important because it's gonna help you in your routines and rituals, okay? Are you ladies still with me? Are you following? Okay, so give me a little heart or something if you guys are still with me. So feeling good and knowing what your best self is. This is going to root you for your routines and rituals, your morning, afternoon, evening. So we're going to talk about morning, afternoon, evening rituals and some tips to stick to those. But in my opinion, and when I work with people, I really want to take it to this next level because you are a unique person. You have to tune into you. No one can really tell you what's right for you except for you. So I'm gonna give you some tools and techniques to make it easier for you, but you still have to do the heavy lifting. You still have to do the work and know what feels good for you and who is your highest self. How are you gonna get there? Because your routines and rituals are gonna help you get there. Okay, so let's talk morning. The purpose of your morning routine and my morning routine, my morning ritual, whatever you want to call it, to me, ritual seems a little bit more fun and a little bit more spiritual. Um, and I actually got that from a friend of mine, Renee Walker. So if you're watching, shout out to you. But your morning routine and ritual is, in my opinion, to ground you throughout the day. If I set up my day really well, then I'm able to 
be more confident, be more secure throughout my day so that when challenges come at you, because they will, you're able to come at them with a clear head. You can be more um, controlled isn't the right word. You can be more tactical and practical when you're coming at your problem solving for whatever you're facing in that day. So in the morning, here's a really good trick. There are so many books and people out there who say, do these five things in the morning and it will set your day up for success. And although I do believe that, if you're anything like me, when I said I had to do these five things or 10 things every morning, this little like rebel inside me was like, I don't want to do that. I felt very constricted and forced, like I had to do these things and I don't deal well when I feel like I have to do something. And I, so I want you every moment and within your rituals and throughout your day, connecting to self, what feels right for you right now. So in order to know what's going to feel right for you, what I do in my morning is I say, okay, I'm going to give myself 10 minutes, five minutes, half an hour, an hour, whatever amount of time you're going to give yourself. So pick the amount of time you're going to give yourself to do your morning routine and ritual to make you feel good and grounded for your day. And then you get to do whatever you want in that time. That's going to make you feel good. Now, if you can see, there's this third piece of homework for you today, and that is to create an alignment list or a feel good list you have to know what makes you feel good. If you're gonna be more generic and give yourself a little bit more space and flexibility and say, you know, for the next hour, I can do whatever I want to make me feel good. That is my goal in my ritual. You have to know what makes you feel good. So I'm gonna give you some of my tips, what I do in my morning, and you can add those to your list, but know what is your list and what will bring you into alignment so that in your morning, when you have five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever you have, I don't care if you have one minute. If you don't have one minute for yourself, you don't have a life. You need to connect to yourself or you're just walking through this haze and you're totally unconnected. You gotta connect to yourself so that you can show up as a better mother, a better wife, a better girlfriend, a better friend, daughter, whatever it is for you, okay? Trust me, it makes a big difference and you'll just be happier and have more inner peace. So a couple things in the morning, mantras, meditation, I actually do a really easy meditation if any of you have trouble meditating. And that is, I either pick a word or a feeling, and I just meditate on that word or that feeling for a minute, three minutes, five minutes, whatever it is for you. So if you only have one minute in the morning, I recommend this little meditation. So you can pick a word like joy, love, peace, fun, whatever. And I want you to practice meditating on that word and feel it. The thing in the morning, if you haven't noticed, I've said feel a million times already. So how do you feel? If you feel love, if you feel peace in your morning, it's going to release all the hormones and receptors in your body, make you feel good and set you up for your day. Okay. So meditation, Um, we can do journaling, reading, even I like tea. Tea is part of what makes you feel good if it is for you. So I will do tea. I will, you know, sit out on the balcony if it's warm enough and or I'll grab a, um, a blanket. So just know what makes you feel good. Okay. Morning. Are you ladies still with me? We're going to go into afternoon, evening, and then we are done. Good. Okay. Give me some comments or some questions if you have any or anything that's resonated with you. Okay. So that's your morning. Easy, right? Just give yourself a little bit more space, but you've got to do the homework of knowing what makes you feel good, what brings you into alignment and who is, what is your best self going in the day, your routines and rituals throughout the day are preventative and reactionary tools that you can use when you get hijacked. So you got to prepare yourself. If I get hijacked in my day and, or if I get triggered in my day, what am I going to do? 
that's my routine throughout the day. I need to know, like, what am I going to do? So I have a little routine that helps me when I get hijacked because we all do we're we're human but it's having the tools again that make then bring you into feeling good and bring you into alignment faster so the more you practice this the quicker you'll be able to recover from a hijack okay an emotional hijack so for me if i notice i'm being triggered i need to pause okay breath work breathing movement I can go for a walk or even a stretch. I and then I look at okay, my awareness of what I'm what just happened. Why did I get hijacked? What is currently going through my mind? Looking at my internal dialogue and then reparenting myself and soothing myself in the moment. I'm going to do an entire training on how to soothe yourself in the moment when you're triggered. If you ladies want that, comment below. I think it's really valuable and I use it clearly daily just knowing what are you going to do when you get hijacked so you are preparing yourself so that you can stay in alignment okay those are your afternoon routines all of these by the way become a pattern and a habit and a way of living it might sound like a lot now if you don't have any routines in your life but once you start practicing it becomes a way of being evening okay we're almost there how are you ladies doing? Do you have any routines now? If you do, let me know what some of your routines are and we can chat about them quickly at the Q&A after. So evening routines. The funny thing about evening routines, and if we look at purpose, your evening routine purpose is to release yourself of your day, calm your nerves, get yourself ready for bed, Oh, you hear a child outside screaming. <laughs> and so releasing, relaxing, and setting yourself up for the next day, right? Is this child going to keep screaming? I think so. I'm going to close the door. Give me one second. Gotta love kids. I don't have any kids in the house. So if you ladies do, I'm sure you are familiar with the screaming noise. <laughs> okay, so evening purpose. Release yourself, calm yourself, get yourself ready for bed, release the day, and then set yourself up for the next day. So we have two parts. I like to set myself up for the next day before I release the energy and release any tension and the day. So how I do that is I will prepare. You can prepare by a to-do list. You can prepare through a visualization. You can prepare by confirming what you have going on. It's kind of like a brain dump so that when you're getting ready for bed, if your mind races, you want to do everything that you can do to get everything out of your head and your mind so that the evening is just between you and you or you, you and your partner. Okay. So if you heard what I said there, and this will elaborate on on relationship day on Thursday, but your best relationship is between you and you. Never forget that. And that these routines and rituals are helping you to improve your relationship between you and you. It's really powerful. So some evening routines, easy, same thing. My evening routines actually are a little bit more structured. I've, I tend to do more or less the same thing in the evening, but if you still need to set a little bit more freedom and flexibility, Number one, no tech. When does your technology get turned off before bed? Medi and, and or even TV, really like no tech, no screens, dimming screens, right? It's super important to for your nervous system and for your body just to stop getting stimulated because we're stimulated so often throughout the day. Evening, bath, journaling, journaling everything out, reading. Those are my normals. <laughs> Tea, again, you notice. Um, meditation, mantras, visualizing the next day. You can even do that in your bath. Okay. So if I think you're seeing some similarities and really it's still a mindset thing to breathing, breath work is also really important to release your day. Is this helping ladies? Are you still with me? Okay, give me a little heart or thumbs up if you're with me. You can comment in the in the section below. Um, so yeah, so those are my evening routines. So is this making sense? 
really looking, even if you want your routine to wake up earlier the next day. In my research and when asking a lot of people that wake up at 3, 4, 5 a.m., your prep time is the night before. How you are, if you want to work out in the morning, putting your clothes out the night before, going to bed early. So many things about waking up early. It's simple. Start your evening routine earlier and go to bed earlier right? Very simple. Starts the day before. Okay. So those are your evening routines. Is this helping? Ladies, do you have any questions? Because we're just about to finish up. So we'll do a quick Q&A if you ladies want to write in the question box. So just to summarize your little homework and, um, and work to really dive into with routines and rituals. What is the purpose of your routines and rituals? What are you hoping to get from it? How do you feel good? Okay, what does feeling, <clears throat> I have a little thing in my throat this morning. What does it mean feel good? How do you feel good? What does that feeling actually feel like? Is it easy? Is it flowing? Really tune into that and question everything. Okay, cool. And then looking at what is your best self? Who is she and what does she do? Easy, right? little journal exercise. One thing also I wanted to mention about journaling. Have you ever tried free, I might butcher the name, like free flowing writing, I think it might be called free writing, something like that. If you have the right name for it, you can comment it below. But it's basically when I love it. And you wouldn't know, considering I don't know the name, but you basically just write and journal, you write until you can't write you, you don't, you don't pick your pen off off the paper. So even if you don't know what to write, you just say, hey, I'm just sitting here writing. I'm not sure what to write, but I'm going to keep writing. And the purpose of this is allowing the brain dump, the connection, the, the messages that you have within you and the clarity that you have within you to be released and stop being blocked by any filters and or conditioning or mindset that you might have in the way. So you just keep writing until things come out. And those sessions when I'm journaling and just free flowing, the things that come out of my hand and onto the paper, I'm like, who wrote that? Who is that? That is so cool. So it's just a really cool technique to continue helping you connect with you and giving you clarity. If you want answers on things right now, work, relationships, coronavirus, um, just try this free flowing writing and see what comes up and see what comes out for me, for you. It's really therapeutic and really, uh, and just really beautiful to allow it to flow. Do we have any questions? We're going to start a little Q and a here. Thank you ladies for being with me this morning for a little training. I hope this helped you to get some rituals and routines set. Are there any rituals or routines you're trying to implement that you're having trouble implementing? Any questions? Maybe. If not, we're going to we're going to finish on up. And so tomorrow, so today's Monday, we're doing motivation on Mondays. Tuesdays, we're doing business. So tomorrow, we're going to be talking about pivoting your business and changing your business during crisis and or setting yourself up essentially for success in order to help you to change and pivot when things happen. Things happen all the time. So what questions can we ask ourselves? How can we use this? Whether you're an entrepreneur or not, you can still use these questions for your boss. I had a friend who used a lot of these questions when she was pivoting and it helped her to not get fired when he was downsizing because he knew that she brought value to the table. So I hope that's a good little teaser for tomorrow. Sending you ladies so much love. Happy Monday. Happy Easter Passover if you celebrate and I will chat with you soon. Thanks for tuning in with me today. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye ladies. Love you.